Hey guys, welcome to my channel, John the Realtor. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, please like and subscribe to this video for more raw information. My segment is called Raw Real Estate, and basically what we talk about is raw, unaltered information. We are very transparent when it comes to our information um, on anything real estate, whether it's buying, selling, investing, whether it's educational for new agents or students. Uh, we are here to provide you raw information on real estate. So today what we're going to talk about is Transaction 101. And what is Transaction 101? Well, if you're looking to buy a home and you're unaware of how it works or how the transaction takes place and who's involved, uh, well, this video will help you with that. If you're new to the business, this video might help you because uh, typically when you first start in the business, you're, don't, you're unaware of all of this, all of these uh, vendors that are involved and all these people that are involved. So um, what I want to do is sort of shed some light on this uh, topic because I get that question a lot like, hey, who's involved in my transaction? Um, I'm going to help a buyer. What do I do next? Well, that's why here at Keller Williams, we have mentorship programs and we have um, people that can guide students and new agents to uh, better serve their clients. And when they have those questions, we're here to answer them. So for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on raw real estate. All right, guys, so here we go. So we're gonna get right into it. We're not gonna take a long time and spend too much time on it, but I do wanna go over uh, the basics on Transaction 101, okay? So today we're gonna call it Transaction 101, all right? So who is all involved in your transaction? So let's just start with uh, the seller, okay? So obviously we have someone that is going to sell their home, all right? So this person is thinking about selling their home and who do they call? They go um, onto Zillow, unfortunately. They go uh, onto realtor.com or they'll just call their local agency. There's online uh, uh, companies as well that they can get referrals from. So like homelight.com is a, a very good company. I actually belong to that company as well as a referral program. Um, and it allows us to really serve our clients well. So, um, so let's say they find their agent and you're going over there and you list their home. Well, now you're involved in the transaction, okay? So let's just go uh, right here and we'll go listing agent, okay? Now you're involved in this. So what's your job as a listing agent? Well, your job as a listing agent is to get photography on the home, okay? Um, I'll put it in here just under here, it's just photos marketing okay uh, what else is your job as a listing agent open houses to hold open houses or if you have a team you can have your team hold open houses okay um, and so on and so on so your marketing all of that stuff showings all that right so now that you've listed your home who else becomes involved is what they call a selling agent okay it's not a buyer's agent Your selling agent is the agent who sells the home, okay? They're bringing you the buyer. So you, if you are the buyer, now you are also involved, all right? So let's say you have found a home that you love and you wanna make an offer on this property, okay? So what happens is you make an offer on the property through a real estate contract through the state of California. Your selling agent will then send the offer to the, uh, excuse me, to the listing agent Okay, send offer. Okay. And then that listing agent will review the offer with their seller. Let's say, let's skip ahead and let's say that the offer has been accepted. Okay, well now they open what's called escrow. For those of you that are new in the business, escrow is the company that actually holds everything together and how the transaction and the home or the property is sold, whether you're in on a commercial uh, deal vacant land deal, residential, residential income, what have you. So now escrow is at the center of the entire transaction, okay? Now, your escrow company will then, your escrow will then be opened, okay? So your listing agent will then open escrow, okay? Now the transaction has started, okay? So where do we go from here? How do we buy this house, all right? well. Obviously, as a buyer, you have the lender. So when you call the bank and you say, I want to buy a home, 
I'd like to get qualified for uh, a loan. How much do I qualify for? Well, that lender is the bank, okay? You have your loan officer. That loan officer works directly with the buyer, okay? And they communicate with the selling agent. It is very important as a selling agent to communicate with that lender because you are represent your client, not the lender, okay? So you have the best interest of your client uh, prepared first. You have fiduciary responsibility to protect your buyer, okay? So you need to communicate with the loan officer at all times to see what's going on during that transaction, okay? Well, now, now that you've opened escrow, what do you do? Well, you get a home inspection, so the buyer will pay for a home inspection. Okay. Now you've paid for a home inspection, now what do you do? Okay. That home inspection is good for the buyer so they know what's going on with that property. I always encourage my buyers to get a home inspection. I do not tell them they must, I tell them it's highly recommended because it is not my job to make my buyer do something they don't want to do. I have had buyers that do not want to get a home inspection because they can fix things themselves and figure it out. I still advise them against that, but when they say no, then that's that's on them, okay? So that ultimately, as a buyer, it's your choice to get a home inspection or not. I always recommend it. However, you know, you sometimes don't want to. Now, the home inspection company is not necessarily di directly uh, communicating with escrow. However, they do communicate with you, okay? And you, in turn, have to let the listing agent know if there's any repairs that they request. Okay? So if there's any repairs that they request, you must submit that to the listing agent. You have a specific timeline for that as a buyer. In California, it's 17 days. Okay? Now, in the meantime, your lender is working on what they call your appraisal. Okay? Now, your appraisal is done by a certified appraiser, California certified appraiser. That appraiser will go out to the home and they'll value the, the property. Once they do that and they determine that the property has been valued, then they send it back to the lender, okay? okay. What they do is they determine that value based on the comparables that the listing agent has found to price the home and the appraiser does their own comparables as well. They have a whole report that they release that is not um, uh, privy to information to the seller, that is actually to the buyer, it belongs to the buyer legally, and even the lender or the selling agent cannot release that report and cannot have that report as a copy. Excuse me, the selling agent cannot. The lender has it because naturally they're the lender, but they cannot legally release that information to anybody without buyer's written permission, okay? So now you have your appraisal, now what happens? All right, so now, you, in the middle of all of this, you have the title company. Title company is who um, does a preliminary report on the property to make sure there are no liens on the property or any issues going on on the property. Um, and they also, through escrow, you have what's called your escrow docket, your escrow package. Uh, let's just do PKG that your buyer and the seller fills out. This escrow package is to determine how you're gonna vest, meaning how you want the property to vest in your name, um, how you, if you're married, if you're unmarried, single, and so on and so forth. This is filled out through escrow, okay? And then once it's filled out through escrow as a buyer, you notarize uh, your documents and it goes back to title later. But title is who actually will transfer property, okay? or transfer, excuse me, ownership, okay? So they transfer ownership on the, on the property. Now, now that you've got all this involved, in the meantime, what the listing agent has to do is also has to provide what's called an NHD. This is a natural hazard disclosure, okay? And, oops, NHD, all right? The natural hazard disclosure uh, in California is required so that you can determine and see if the property is in a flood zone, an earthquake fault line, um, uh, seismic you know, areas, things like that. So it gives information to the buyer on the particular property because depending on where you are, 
There could be flood zones. Naturally, if you live in the desert or specific areas, or if you live at the ocean, it's gonna be different than uh, in just in the city, okay? So that's also important, and that actually is what also comes out through escrow as well, okay? Now, this is just a standard transaction, okay? So you have your escrow company who works with title. The NHD is ordered by the listing agent, okay? Well, actually, it's ordered by escrow, but the listing agent picks, generally the seller picks your services. So the seller picks escrow company, uh, picks title company. Typically what I do is I'll give them two or three companies and then we'll decide who we wanna go with based on the home and where it is, okay? So you have your listing agent and your selling agent, you have your seller and your buyer, you have the escrow company which works with title, works with NHD, and quite frankly, they work with the lender as well. Okay, not necessarily directly, but they do follow up with the lender on all of that. Plus, as a buyer, you pay for the home inspection and the buyer pays for the appraisal. Okay, that is, again, remember, that belongs to the buyer. So they pay for that appraisal, okay? So you ask, well, what does the seller pay for? Well, the seller pays for termite if they ask for it, okay? They also pay for septic inspections. If you live in an area where there's a septic tank and not a sewer system, okay? They'll pay for that. And they'll pay for any repairs if it's negotiated appropriately, okay? So if, it's, if repairs have been negotiated and the seller says yes, then the seller will pay for those typically, or they can offer a credit to the buyer. Now, as buyers, you wanna remember that the repairs that you ask for, the seller does not have to do them. Uh, now, unless your appraisal comes out and it's a, a safety issue or something like that, then of course, that's gonna be called out on the appraisal. So anything called out there does have to be repaired in order for your loan to fund, okay? so. Um, standard repairs from a home inspection, cosmetic repairs, things like that, the seller does not have to abide by. Um, they can choose to or they can choose to say no. Uh, typically sellers are pretty good about it. I have had sellers that are, sell are selling the property as is. Maybe they just are not there financially and they cannot provide repairs. So it just depends on the situation, okay? Um, now, new agents. All With all this involved, there has to be some sort of etiquette there. My next video is gonna be on real estate etiquette between realtors and between realtors and vendors. There's gotta be some etiquette out there, okay? Some agents out there do lack that etiquette, unfortunately. Sorry to call you guys out, I'm not calling you guys out by name, but um, not necessarily people I've worked with directly, but people out there are stories I've heard. Uh, fortunately, pretty much everyone that I've worked with has been fantastic, so um, I haven't had to deal with that. But as you can see, there's a lot going on here, okay? Um, and if I have forgotten anything, please let me know in the comments below. Um, but uh, real quick on your lender. So your lender, when you're talking to the person that's doing your loan, which is your loan officer, keep in mind they don't work alone, okay? They're not the only one approving your loan. They have what's called a processor. Um, now that processor uh, essentially processes the loan. What the loan officer will do is they'll get the information from the buyer, pay stubs and taxes and all that stuff. They'll put their package together and they'll give it to the processor. The processor will look at it and say, okay, I need, a, I need another pay stub from you. Okay, great, they'll grab it. And the processor will give it to the underwriter, okay? So we'll go underwriter. Now, the underwriter is who ultimately decides whether this loan can go through or not. So you kind of want to be nice to the underwriter, okay? So from loan officer to underwriter, okay, the underwriter also communicates with the appraisal report, okay? The appraisal report comes back, the underwriter reviews it. If they agree with that report, then the loan goes through and then we have the funder, okay? In the state of California, we also have what's called a CD, which is a closing disclosure. We'll just call CD for now. There's a three-day waiting period for that. So once there's loan approval, Okay. Then they wait the three days. And then you fund and you record. Record means the county records. So escrow will set up the property to be recorded uh, so that new ownership can take place. Okay. Once escrow closes, then from there you get, um, the seller will get their money if they get their money, then all the checks are dispersed and so on and so forth. That's a whole nother escrow class that I cannot do because I'm not an escrow officer, um, nor do I pretend to know everything about escrow, okay? So just so you know, this is, this is your basic transaction, okay? 
I don't think I've uh, necessarily forgotten anything. Um, other people involved that I didn't mention, um, this listing agent has what's called a TC and so does the uh, selling agent. So new agents, veteran agents, please make sure that your TCs are copied in every email because that's important. If not, then how is the TC going to communicate with the other side? Okay, super important. Veteran agents should know this by now. Some agents don't copy and just don't pay attention. New agents, please make sure you don't form bad habits like that, okay? Um, so that's what's going on here. Escrow officer has assistance, okay? Your title company does a lot for you as an agent, all right? They go to county for you sometimes. They'll, they go through a lot of stuff to help you out. So your basic escrow time frame right now is 45 days, guys. 45 days to close an escrow. Uh, generally, I like to do it in 30 to 35 days. However, uh, 45 days is always safe because uh, you can close early and you know be a hero. So this, guys, is your escrow uh, 101 or transaction 101 on what goes on on the back end, okay? So um, that's basic. You know, if I forgot anything, I apologize, but I think that's pretty much it at this point. Um, uh, stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be real estate etiquette. I'm going to give you three pointers on how to be more professional in the industry because we all ultimately do work together as agents to help our clients. Okay, so I will have that video out uh, probably on Friday. Uh, this is going to be your Tuesday video and uh, might post it early. So we'll see. Okay, uh, I hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you for joining me on Raw Real Estate. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a like below. Uh, please subscribe for future videos. We're, we're thinking of content all the time. So um, anyways, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon.